Come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I'll be unboxing and taking a first look at NO1800 from Cosmos, and we'll crack this open right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, today I'm going to be unboxing and taking a first look at Anno 1800. But first, I do want to mention that we are in the midst of the Gaming Gang's October Spooktacular 2021. And what that means is each and every day this month, you're going to find a brand new video devoted to tabletop gaming over on thegaminggang.com. Now, it might be a first look video like today's, or it could be a review, or if it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you're going to find my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news and first looks at tabletop games. Also should mention, at 9 p.m. Central, Every night of October, I'll be sharing a spooky old-time radio broadcast that's destined to put a chill down your spine. So there's lots of fun going on all throughout the month of October over at thegaminggang.com. That said, today, as I mentioned, I'm going to be unboxing and taking a first look at Anno 1800, which is from Cosmos, designed by Martin Wallace, with artwork provided by Fiori GmbH. The game is for two to four players, ages 12 and up, plays in around two hours, and it's going to carry an MSRP of $69.95. This is arriving in some stores. Some online retailers are still indicating that this is a pre-order. So keep in mind, this is arriving very soon, or possibly it's already at your friendly local game store. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Anno 1800. So I do want to mention the fine folks over at Cosmos were kind enough to send me this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang received any other sort of compensation for me to share my thoughts about this game with you. These days, it's very important that you know that. All right, let's take a look at the back of the box. I like the I like the artwork on the cover here. I have played a couple of the Anno PC games, which are from Ubisoft, and I have enjoyed those tremendously. I have to admit, I have not played 1800, which I believe is the latest. So let's take a look at the back. The sun is rising on the age of industry. Will you rise with it? In Anno 1800, the board game, you strive to build up your industrial might as you develop an island society at the dawn of the industrial age. Investing in your navy enables trade and expansion to new territories, but you must also focus on the happiness of the citizens of your home island. While they may initially be satisfied with food and clothing, in time, they will demand valuable luxury goods. Plan your development strategy and supply chains carefully whilst maintaining an even distribution of farmers, workers, craftsmen, engineers, and investors. But beware, because the competition never sleeps. Your rivals may steal new achievements out from under your nose at any time. Whose island will prosper and whose will fail? Sweet. Let's jump on in. Let's get the shrink wrap off here. I'll admit it is it's been a while since I've played a Martin Wallace game. I'm trying to remember what the last Martin Wallace game may have been. Gosh, off the top of my head, I can't even think of it. So let's jump on in, see what we have got cooking in here. So we've got uh, a bunch of different colored cubes, some baggies, looks like we've got some tiles, looks like maybe island tiles, terrain tiles. Got different cards. 
and maybe player boards. Take a stab that these might be player boards. These stickers. No, these look like, are these like player aids? I think, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think these are player aids. We're going to zoom in. We're going to take a closer look at all of this stuff. Here's the rule book. And we've got some punch boards with some tiles as well. So the first thing we're going to take a look at, let's take a peek at the rules. Some of this stuff out of the way. So we've got a game board. Yep, those are game aids. Those are player aids. Those are the home islands. Okay. Old world islands and new world islands. Construction tokens, starting player token, naval tokens, gold population, got expedition cards, objective cards, population cubes. So that's what the different colors of the cubes represent different populations. Here's our game setup. So each of the players, there's their boards. It's a Martin Wallace design, so I'm going to take a stab in the dark that there's going to be some complexities in here. So, and it's kind of funny. I always kind of joke around a little bit by saying with Martin Wallace designs, there's always that, that one mechanic that you sit there going, hmm, hmm. So gameplay and the aim of the game. In Anno 1800, the board game, each player expands their own island by erecting new buildings, shipyard and ships, trading resources, and satisfying the needs of the population. By producing or trading goods, cards can be played and yield influence points at the end of the game. Starting player begins, blah, blah, blah. I to guess maybe the influence points are what are going to score you the victory. We're going to find out. So we've got different actions so we can expand. So we can expand industries, shipyards, and ships. We can play and activate population cards, swap population cards, increase the workforce upgrade, open up the old world. We can explore the new world. Take expedition cards. We can create a festival. Okay, here's the end of the game. As soon as the player has played the last card from their hand, example, they do not have any more population cards in their hand, the end of the game is triggered. The player immediately obtains the fireworks token. The current round is still played to the end so that every player has the same number of turns. After this, a final round is played before the game ends. If the player has triggered the end of the game, oh, I'm sorry, if the player that has triggered the end of the game receives any more population cards in their hand at any point, the end of the game still remains triggered, and the player does not have to give up the fireworks token either. So I'm going to guess the fireworks token is probably the first player token. So we're going to get influence points, population cards, expedition cards, gold. Three gold yields an influence point. The fireworks token yields seven influence points. Well, maybe, it's, uh, maybe the fireworks token is a little more important than first player. Finally, check for influence points on the displayed objective cards. All right, cool. So talking about the objective cards, combinations of objective cards, effects of the population, and objective cards. Got some tips for getting started. Cool. And a little bio about Martin Wallace. And a quick reference sheet on the back as well. Okay, so we're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to take a peek at, these are the player aid cards. And we have four of these. Uh, these are just relatively thick paper. These are not cardstock. So it's showing all of these different goods. There's little ships. And then on the back we have... Uh, the different actions, as well as resource management, a breakdown of that as well. We've got four of those. We have, I think, if I remember correctly, I think these were the, I don't know if these, were, yeah, I think these are the player boards. Find out if there's four. 
them. Well, no, these are the player boards. There are, there are four, and they are identical. So I believe up here is our population. So it looks like we grow. So we start out, it looks like little farms, and then we kind of build up, and then finally, looks like we've got, um, oh, you, I'd say, kind of Gilded Age buildings there. Got yeah, looks manufacturing. It looks like throughout here. Got a dock. Got a couple of different kinds of ships. So I'm sure some are mercantile ships. The others are probably exploration ships. Oh, nice! And then we get uh, the cover art on the back. That's a nice extra touch. A lot of times, most games would just be blank. Okay, so those are the player boards. Let's take a peek. Let's take a look at some of these punch boards that we've got, because we've got quite a few of those. And then we'll take a look at uh, the cards. I'm going to say, yeah, there are quite a few of these. So it appears this is looks like a mercantile board. I'm guessing that all of the players are going to utilize this. I think this is like one of the center boards that the players use. Because here we have all the different types. We've got different ki kinds of resources here. The, and then we also have some finished goods as well. So looking like our different colored cubes with our population might go in piles along the side here. We do also have these color coded as well. So we got blue, it's like red, essentially, purple, and this kind of lighter blue, and almost like a you know, light olive color there. And I'm taking a guess, maybe we put some cards. It's actually a little difficult to kind of squeeze this board in here with the game box taking up space on the table. But we've got this area as well. And then this is the second half here. What I think is kind of cool though, is we also get this artwork on the back of this as well. So it's like a, uh, some royalty is getting to see an electric bulb. As you can see, there's a big balloon, hot air balloon behind that. So that's cool. I like that. It's those little extra touches that, that really go a long way to, uh, to giving a game a lot of visual pop. All right, so here we've got, I think these are like old world tokens. So we've got three on each of these tiles. And then we've got some markers here as well. We've got more of those. So we have four more of them and then more of these markers. And they are dual sided. So these are going to be random, obviously enough. So we don't know what we're going to find with these. Then we've got gold. We've got some gold here. And then once again, we have the various different products. So here we have, as an example, we've got coffee. It's either coffee or tea. And dual-sided as well. So these are dark. Let's see if these are the same. So these are like the locations for manufacturing. And then on the other side, it's as if we've got these. These are kind of like your resources required to be able to produce this. Once again, I have not played this game. You saw me unbox this. I'm just kind of throwing out some ideas here of what this looks like it might be. We've got more. We've got uh, actually three more of these punch boards. So it looks like we've got some textiles, chocolates. Maybe that's rum. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. It's like dynamite, explosives, bicycles. Clothing, 
cannons. And we got more gold here as well. And then these are the other signs. And we've got another one that is loaded up with this. Now, these are ships. Got the different ships. This looks like these are docks or shipyards. There's the fireworks. That's worth the seven influence points. Looks like that's a, an admiral or general. Oops, these are these are ships and those are shipyards. And then we've got some more items here. We've got electric bulbs, cannon. Looks like uh, early automotives. More ships once again. Interesting. There's quite a bit to this. So these are the other islands. So these are bigger. I think these are the old world. I think the other ones we were looking at that are on the punch boards, I think those are the, the new world. Yes, these are, so I'm taking a stab that as you expand, you can actually kind of, kind of colonize these, you kind of colonize these different islands as well. So some of them have buildings on it, others, I think this is population. This one has this one has a ship there. So these are the different ones. That one has a shipyard. That one also has another ship. So I think, like I said before, I think one of these is mercantile, and I think the other one is for exploration. So we got those. We've got uh, a bunch of cubes in different colors. I mean, they're just standard wooden cubes. And we got cards. We've got different decks of cards here. So I'm not sure how many decks we've got. We do know we've got an expedition deck, which I think might be this. And then we've got population cards. Because we know that's how you trigger the end, is when somebody plays the last card in their hand. Let's see what we've got. So these are all looking to be the same deck here. This is a different deck. Now I will mention there is no insert in the box. It is just an open box bottom. Okay, so we've got these. These more of the, yeah, looks like we've got more of these people. Kind of cool how we've got. It looks like this is all unique artwork on these. So each of these these individuals looks like they provide you with influence points. That's for sure. That's pretty wild. I like how they've all got. Individual artwork. None of these are duplicated. And there are a variety of ethnic groups as well. So that's this side of the cards. And then on this side, okay, they all have the same, they all have the same backing. That's what I was kind of curious about. I don't know they don't. Ah, we've got different kinds. Okay, so these are more expensive, I think. But they're probably more valuable. And then what we got over here, more of this deck. I think it's also showing us the kind of 
individual that they're going to be as far as population. So, like, we've got farmers, we've got, I'm taking a guess, those are probably engineers. So that's all that deck here. And as you can see, the influence points are lower. And this might be what you earn if you, when you play this population card. I don't know. <laughs> I got to say this, it, this really does look very, very interesting. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to say it again. I am very impressed that every one of these cards has unique artwork. I dig that a lot. All right, so let's take a look at what appears to be the expedition cards. Because okay, so these are going to have the same artwork with this captain. Hmm. But a lot of these are different. A lot of these icons, geez, scorpion. Like Thor's helmet, Davy Joe's locker with the, with the pirate skull. Okay, so we've got that. What's what's this? Okay, so we got a World's Fair. That's the Crystal Palace right there. Alonzo Graves. I'm checking to see these. I don't think these are actual famous people. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. There's the queen, the editor. So we get a zoo, we get a museum, we get a university. So we have more individuals in here as well. There might be a lot going on in this game. All right, so we've got the different decks of cards. Use some of these baggies here. So that these cards aren't flying all over that box. So we got the different decks of cards. Let's see if I can split this in half. See if it'll fit. I think it's going to be kind of a tight squeeze. So I should point out that right now, the Gaming Gang and the live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, are being sponsored by RockCon, which is taking place in Rockford, Illinois. And it is October 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. I am going to be going to RockCon, and I think I'm going to put this in the trunk of my car because I'm going to bring some games with me as well and uh, maybe see I can get uh, get this in with some people I don't normally game with. I think that'd be pretty cool. All right, so this is the, the bottom of the box. As I mentioned, there's, there's nothing, you know, no insert or anything. So do this. Put these in here as well. Got these other boards. We have the player aid cards, all four of those. We've got the two-part board, as well as all of these punch boards. Got the rule book. I think that's everything. When we take all of it outside the box of Anno 1800. And as I mentioned, I'm going to have a review of this in the very near future. I got to say, game looks pretty interesting, and uh, my interest is peaked. I want to check this out. <laughs> Once again, NO1800, the board game, I guess I should say the board game, is from Cosmos. It's designed by Martin Wallace with artwork provided by Fiori GmbH. Game is for two to four players, ages 12 and up. Plays in about two hours, and it will carry an MSRP of $69.95. Do believe it is arriving in stores and online retailers as I speak or very shortly.
And of course, once again, stay tuned. I will have a review of Anno 1800, the board game, in the very near future. All right, that's it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this first look, it'll also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you so much for taking time out to watch this video. And until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.